Hi, I'm Dr. Castanet. I want to explain neck and back pain to you today and uh, why our approach to physical therapy is what it is. 98% uh, of neck and back related pain is related to the normal de progressive degenerative process that happens in the neck and the back. This all makes sense to you uh, as I explain it. Uh, there's a 2% of subset that are unusual uh, causes of neck and back pain. These include things like fractures, tumors, locations, infections, things like that. But the bulk of neck and back pain happens as a result of the natural progressive degenerative process that happens. And the source of that is the changes in the spinal disc. Spinal discs over time, which function as the cushions, I'll show you using a model here. Um, Spinal discs are in between the vertebrae. These are the bones or, that make up your spine. These are the vertebrae, or the, rather the spinal discs that serve as the cushions between the vertebrae. Uh, there are a couple of components to the disc. There's a central part that's kind of gelatinous uh, in consistency. And then there are tough fibrous rings that surround that, anywhere from 12 to 25 layers of this tough fibrous tissue that are meant to contain this gelatinous component in the center and uh, the discs provide a cushion and they distribute the loads, the compressive axial loads uh, to the peripheral fibers. Uh, they enable your spine to move in various directions and to absorb stress throughout the day as you walk and lift and bend and do all the physical things you do. But over the course of time it's normal for these discs to become dehydrated, lose water content, then um, the pH drops in here, the cells that live within here and that are supposed to repair the disc, they uh, find a more hostile environment, many of them die off, and then they start to make fewer of the molecules to repair the disc, so that day to day, month to month, year to year, they can't keep up with wear and tear and over time they degenerate. Uh, unfortunately, their only chance to recover uh, from life's physical demands is at night when we lay down on our backs and then they can imbibe water or bring water in, become rehydrated and uh, improve the status in there for the, for the cells. But for many of us, um, and this is partly a function of nutrition and genetics as well, uh, the physical demands, the rigors of the day uh, exceed uh, the capacity to regenerate during the night. Uh, the treatment we provide, and I'll explain it in a moment, uh, enhances the regenerative component of this and there is potential for disc regeneration, but the point is that the status of your spine as a whole is largely dependent on the status of the disc. If you make the disc better, then you make the spine as a whole better. Uh, when the disc degenerates, it loses height because it's losing water content, it slowly collapses, as that happens, there's more pressure on the joints of the vertebrae. Then that results in enlargement of the bones, um, and they grow in all directions, including uh, the direction of the canal here where the nerves reside. So they begin to encroach on the nerve space, and they can pinch nerves as they come down the canal. Discs can also bulge or herniate, as you know, and they can, when they bulge or herniate, that typically happens in the back part they may then move back into the area where the nerves are. So that can press ner nerves as well. Uh, so, and and that, that accounts for 98% of why necks and backs hurt. Um, there are a variety of treatments for this. Uh, you can adjust joints, may make a difference. You can have people exercise, may make a difference. But the most direct and rational, effective and uh, means of treatment I've found in 20 years clinical experience is and I think you'll find this intuitive and logical, is uh, to take pressure off of the disc, get more water, oxygen, and nutrients into the disc. You can partially regenerate it. It gets pressure as well off the joints, pressure off the nerves if they're pinched, causing radiating pain down their arms or legs, and you get people to have relief typically with the first treatment. Uh, but it will require typically a series of treatments to make enough for difference that you've changed the status of the disc and people are out of pain and function again uh, the way they should uh, for typically a long time. When you treat people with the means of treatment we use, spinal decompression, 
uh, they will typically get better and stay better for many months to several years. Life, however, is a compressing event for the spine. It is a slowly progressive uh, compressive process. So it is normal during the course of your life to need this treatment intermittently. But it makes a lot more sense than things like strengthening the core muscles or adjusting joints because it directly addresses the cause of the pain and it improves a person's prognosis. If you don't intervene in this slowly progressive process of compression, uh, over time they will get more and more compressed. It will become more and more difficult and take longer and longer to get them decompressed enough to be out of pain and functional again. Um, it is usually effective uh, in the vast majority of cases. And I would like to add that when surgery is finally done, if all non-surgical measures fail, surgery is, again, 98% of the time done to decompress the spine. Now, they may call it a discectomy, they might call it uh, stenosis surgery, they may call it a fusion, but all of these surgical procedures are intended to reduce compression on the spine, whether it's the joints or the nerves. And that's why surgery is effective when it's effective. Unfortunately, there's a disconnect in medicine and they don't recognize that uh, the common uh, means of treatment surgically and non-surgically should be through a decompressive approach. That's what I provide. That is what, in my 28 years clinical experience, has been the most effective tool I've ever used. I have worked in 18, for 18 years in orthopedics. I spent four years uh, in a neurosurgical practice learning surgical indications and procedures. So, and I've been in a physical therapy practice for, for years working with physical therapists. So I'm well versed in the means of treatment that all the providers have. I respect them, but I can tell you that the bulk of neck and back problems would be much better served with a primarily decompressive approach to treatment for neck and back problems with adjunctive core strengthening um, and sometimes manipulation. Uh, but those are secondary procedures less directed at the primary cause of pain and less effective as a result. So if I can help you with uh, your neck or back pain, please see me. My name is Dr. Castanet. I'm in Decatur, Georgia presently. Our number is 770-908-0740 and our website is backstrong.net. You can learn more about our approach to treatment and you can learn more about your pathology, whether it's degenerative disc disease, sciatica, spinal anesthesis, or any number of other uh, spinal pathologies. You can go to the website, watch some videos, and I explain the pathology and why um, we use our particular approach to treatment for that pathology. Thanks very much.